Here today, we're going to talk about the newest Blu-ray player that I've added to my collection of Blu-ray players here in my home theater, and that is the Pioneer BDP 51 FD Blu-ray player. And I'm also going to show you how to update the firmware because this Blu-ray player is pretty old. Stay tuned. Like many things here in my home theater, I tend to impulse buy on certain things because I just think it's cool and I think it's a neat upgrade or I think it's a neat piece of technology here to have just in my home theater. And Blu-ray players are no exception to that. I currently have like five Blu-ray players here in my home theater or in the other part of my basement. Do I need five Blu-ray players? Not really, but I've upgraded them and just got different ones over the course of the last few years. The most recent of which, and what I'm going to be talking about here today, is the Pioneer BDP 51FD Blu-ray player. Now this is a little bit older Blu-ray player. This is not a recent model. I found this Pioneer Blu-ray player on Shop Goodwill, and I paid about $45 all in on this unit. It was about $20 for the actual base price and about $25 for shipping and handling. Now, $45, is that a good deal on this type of Blu-ray player? I think it is a pretty good deal. This unit weighs about 13 pounds. It's pretty heavy. Uh, it's all metal, the connectors on the back. They're just really nice quality connectors and components in this unit. And when this retailed initially, this was a $600 Blu-ray player. This was right up near the top of the line Blu-ray player that you could buy at the time when this came out. And I still have my Panasonic UB420, which is my 4K player. And I really try to keep that exclusively for my 4K discs, which I don't have a whole ton of, but I really try and just keep it for that and for the tone mapping and everything, the conversion from HDR to SDR. So why did I actually buy this Blu-ray player? Well, outside of the fact that I just have an issue, like I mentioned in one of my previous videos, about sometimes just impulsively buying things that I think are cool and that I think are just a really good deal because they were really high quality when they first came out. The main reason I bought this is I've been cycling in my daily driver Blu-ray players, more or less. I started with an Oppo BDP83 Blu-ray player. And when I made a video and kind of talked about that early on in my channel, I talked about how I never had any problems with it. It was uh, a perfectly working unit that I got as a four parts unit off eBay. Well, as soon as I made that video and made those comments about it, I started having issues where it wouldn't read discs and the tray would get jammed and it just had problems that started to pop up as soon as I made mention that I never had an issue with it. And so I sold that off and got rid of it. And then I picked up a Sony Blu-ray player, just a very basic uh, kind of older model from like 2012, 2013 from Sony. Again, it worked fine initially, uh, but fairly soon after I started using it, it also developed problems where the Blu-ray laser started to go out and it wouldn't read Blu-ray discs, it would only read DVDs. So then I got rid of that. And then I ended up cycling in a few Panasonic Blu-ray players that I had picked up on uh, Shop Goodwill for one of them, and then another one at another local thrift store. And I still have both of those. They're actually sitting in the other part of my basement. And they seem to work fine, but I did notice there was some issues with like color clipping and just the different input levels. So if I tried to calibrate my projectors with one of those Blu-ray players, and then I tried to play a different Blu-ray player or like my Xbox or my PlayStation or something, it would start to show different gamma and uh, video problems and things. You know, it's not like the disk drives or anything have broken on them. They just have a different type of uh, video picture controls, if that makes sense. And so I was using those and kind of swapping them back and forth, trying to see which one I liked. When I stumbled across the Pioneer unit on Shop Goodwill. And I, I took a gamble on it, you know, and I mainly did that because this was such a high-end unit when it first came out. Like I said, it was $600. When I got the actual Pioneer player here, uh, to my surprise, 
it actually worked perfectly fine. It didn't have any issues. It had very minimal wear on the actual unit. But the one problem it did have was that it had the original like 1.0 firmware on it from 2009. Now, some people may say, what's really the issue with that? Why would it matter what firmware is on there? And in most cases, outside of maybe like security updates, if you have it connected to a network for Blu-ray Live, like data or something, or if it had streaming apps built in, which it doesn't, but if it did have streaming apps built in, you would maybe need the newest firmware to operate these apps or something. But in my case, where I'm not connected to the internet with it, it has no streaming apps, it's strictly for disk-based content playback. Why would I need to update the firmware? And the main reason for that is newer Blu-ray discs would not read in the player. So any disc that was really produced after like 2010, 2011-ish, uh, give or take a little bit on there, those discs would not play in the player. You would put the disc in, it may say like Blu-ray CD-ROM or it may just give you a bunch of numbers and a bunch of weird like characters on the screen, or it may just say uh, unreadable or unplayable, or maybe like unknown on there. It would give a bunch of these different error codes and different things, and you couldn't actually play it. It's not the actual drive itself that had an issue because I could play regular DVDs just fine and I could play older Blu-rays just fine. There was no issue. So ultimately I needed to update the firmware so that I could play the most modern uh, discs that I have here in my collection. Normally, when you have to update firmware on one of these older players, because I have done this before with a few of my older Blu-ray players, that Sony and that Oppo Blu-ray player that I had initially, you would normally just go online to, say, the Pioneer website or Panasonic or Oppo or wherever, and you would download the firmware, burn it to a CD-ROM disc, and then just put it in the player and update it. Well, the problem with that in this case is because this Blu-ray player is so old, the actual Pioneer support site for this player is no longer active. It's actually been removed from the internet. So there's no way to actually download the file unless you find somebody who has it. So I went and browsed some various forums on like AVS forum and home theater groups and different things, trying to find somebody who may have still had the actual file for the update uh, for this Blu-ray player. And I couldn't find it anywhere. And some people who had posts saying that they had it, the most recent update to those forums were like two, three years ago. And when I reached out, those people didn't have them anymore. So I kind of figured I'd be at a dead end and that there'd be no way to update the firmware. However, I did do a quick uh, search around eBay, which is something I normally don't do for stuff like this. And I found a seller on eBay that actually had the firmware downloaded and burnt to a disc. Now, typically, like I said, I don't do stuff like this. I had to pay like 10 bucks to get this uh, purchased and shipped to me to update the Blu-ray player. Paying an extra $10 or whatever it was to get this disc to then update the firmware at this point in time, all these years later, is that really worth it? And because I'm going to use this as my daily Blu-ray player for most of my Blu-ray content, I felt it was worth spending like the $10 to get it. But under most circumstances, you know, especially on technology this old, that's kind of a toss up, kind of a coin flip on whether or not you want to spend extra money to get just a burnt CD that took basically probably five minutes for the seller to make and uh, you know virtually no time to just throw in a padded envelope and sent off in the post office but for me I wanted the most recent firmware update on this blu-ray player so what you basically have to do is you have to use the actual commands on the player itself you can't use a remote to do this it for some reason causes weird issues if you try and use a remote to do this so what you basically do is you take the update disk you power on your unit you open the disk tray and you drop the cd in there close the tray and then it may take a minute but then you will see that it says updating on the little screen on the blu-ray player and now the footage that you're watching is sped up because it took legitimately like 
15 to 20 minutes to actually perform this update, so I sped the footage up here so we weren't sitting in real time. So you'll see as it goes through in the sped up footage, it's updating, you'll see it updating like one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to like 20 something. It'll talk about menu updates. It'll run through this entire process. And then at the very end, when it is completed and the update has actually been applied and actually took to the player, it'll eject the disc, it'll pop the tray open, and it'll say update complete. It then does take a minute to hit the power button and power everything down and reset the system. But then once that does happen and you reset everything and then turn the power back on, as you'll see to the other footage that's gonna pop in here, on the main menu, it'll show an update function. You go down and click that, and at the very bottom of the screen, you will see a firmware version 1.74, which is the most recent firmware version for this player. Now, this firmware is not incredibly current. I, I believe it was last updated in like the mid 2010s, somewhere like 2015, 2016, uh, thereabouts. Again, since the actual support page is removed, I don't know what actual date this firmware is from. But honestly, I don't think it can be later than like the mid 2010s, uh, because this player was kind of out of production and kind of phased out well into the mid 2010s. So past like 2015, 2016, I can't imagine this firmware is any newer than that. But once this firmware has been actually loaded onto the Blu-ray player and restarted, I was able to throw in newer discs that didn't play initially, and they all booted up and they all played. This is the House of the Dragon Blu-ray set, which is relatively new, it's only a couple years old. And initially this was a set that would not play in this Blu-ray player when I tried it out. And so you can see from this footage, it takes a second to load, but it actually plays and loads into the menu with no issues. So the updated firmware did its job and actually updated everything correctly to where I can play probably any of my current Blu-rays I wanna play here in this player. I'm gonna use this Blu-ray player as my daily driver. So I'm gonna try and play my regular Blu-rays and I'm gonna try and play my DVDs uh, that I watch here in my home theater. It should work pretty well for that. Like I said, it's very well built, very well constructed. I don't think I should have any issues now that the firmware is updated. I mean, depending how long I keep this, if I keep it for several years, I could potentially see some issues arise down the road with even more uh, modern Blu-rays that are produced, you know, even in the future of when this video is posting. So we'll, we'll kind of cross that bridge as it gets there. But at least for now and for my needs, I think this will be a pretty good, solid daily driver Blu-ray player. And overall, for the limited amount of time I've used it, especially after updating the firmware, the picture quality is really good on it. Now I know a lot of the picture quality is going to go based off of the disc and it's also going to be your display device, so your projector or your TV, but the player itself looks to have updated its gamma settings, its chroma and color clipping and everything to where the image actually looks really good on it. And so I'm a happy customer, you know, I'm glad I made this purchase and hopefully this will last me for at least a couple years uh, to be my daily driver Blu-ray player here in my home theater. So with that, we're gonna end the video here today. Uh, like I always do, I wanna say thank you to everyone who's liked and subscribed to my channel, everyone who's watched my content, left a comment. I really do appreciate it. It really does help me out. It really helps me grow the channel, which is something I'm really trying to focus on and do here as the year winds down. So with that, Thank you again to everyone, and I will see you the next time in the next video here on Secondhand Home Theater.